good to see you. <laughs> Dear soon-to-be graduates of the 23rd MAIS, Volke Bernadotte, members of the faculty that I see around here, ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, and all those who join us virtually on the live stream. We made a promise. I guess all of you remember. We promised that your Master of Advanced International Studies will not be the only one in the history of this place without a graduation. And here we are. Welcome. Usually I stand here and say that this is one of the great moments at the end of each academic year when I say my welcome to the students who in a few moments become graduates of the Vienna School of International Studies. These few moments took a long time for you. Graduation or commencement, whatever you would like to call it, normally is a moment. A moment between past and the future which passes, you will enjoy it, you remember it, but you had to wait for this moment a year actually a year. But as we know, you are not alone. Somehow I feel that you are a little bit like the European football championship or the Olympic Games in Tokyo. It's Euro 2020 and Olympic 2020 and you are class 2020 and here we are, 2nd of July 2021. It's not usually, but in these last one and a half years, nobody was really able to use this word usually in the word that we, in the sense that we would like to use it. I think you made a very good choice that you decided to wait for a year for your graduation ceremony, because now we can celebrate it together. You were the only group which chose that we postpone it for one year. And this had never happened before. So again, something which makes your class special. And what's really special is that I see so many of you. I'm overwhelmed that so many of you are here. Some of you traveled from far, as I know. One of your colleagues even from Kazakhstan, where is she? Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, it took Jenny quite some efforts and me to convince the Austrian authorities that we should allow her in. <laughs> Please forgive us. 45 out of 67. That's a huge number. That's an amazing number given the fact that you had to overcome obstacles, that you have made various experiences in, 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 this, in this year. We are happy to see that the DA and your classmates are so dear to you that here we are together. Thank you that you came back to this place. My welcome certainly also goes to your parents, relatives, friends who are here and everybody who helped you not only through the two years at the academy, but also in the last year, we would not have been able to offer what we tried to, to offer you. Uh, and I made a check of how much we could offer you. Out of six terms, five terms were normal, whatever normal means in these days. And only the last term was really different. And I guess you, you remember how different that was from one day to the other, really, for all of us. It was the 13th of March, 2020. But I would like to, to thank a few among us. First of all, the faculty who taught and guided you through the academic years at the Diplomatic Academy. You know that we always try to support our permanent and resident faculty with visiting professors, postdocs, guest lecturers, because something that I always say, also at inaugurations, we are committed to academic excellence. 
Having the name Diplomatische Akademie Wien translated into Vienna School of International Studies is not a coincidence. It means that this should be a school for international studies and advanced international studies. And that we are dedicated to the fundamental values of open societies and the liberal world order. I guess you will all underwrite this. I was taking a look at the notes of your inauguration ceremony. And I found that first of all, I was welcoming our new chair in European studies, um, together with the University of Vienna, Patrick Müller, for his first academic year here at the Diplomatic Academy. He is such an here and part of our faculty already that this was incredible to see for me. He's no longer the youngest resident professor we have here. <laughs> and he seems to be very happy about this. <laughs> During your academic years, Werner Neudeck was still the dean of the MICE program. He's not here today, but I guess many of you know not only his jokes, but also his knowledge. Last year, he handed over the torch to Professor Feldkircher but Professor Neudeck is still teaching it with us here. He cannot leave us, really. Uh, also, the postdoctoral fellows who started in your second year are finishing their term already. So we have to bid farewell to Madalina Dobresco and Barnaby Crowcraft, whom you certainly remember. I also would like to thank our sponsors, and that's something that uh, is always very, actually very close to my heart because without the help of so many individual persons, sponsors from uh, organizations, the European, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the provinces, it would not be possible to provide almost 30% of our students with some sort of financial support in the form of grants and scholarships. And I certainly also thank the Board of Trustees of this academy. We are a state institution with a very, very sort of strange organization, I have to tell you, because we are a state organization which has to run on, on its own budget, which is, in the Austrian case, quite an exception, I have, to, I have to tell you. And sometimes, especially in COVID times, it's challenging. But I look also at my deputy director. She knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but we survived. You know this place. It's almost 270 years, so we will survive another year. So you had a good bet when you said that you will have your graduation ceremony a year later. and We would still exist as an academy. And certainly, I would also like to mention your parents again and your relatives again, and also our staff here, all the persons who supported you. Uh, you started your studies before this pandemic changed our lives. And uh, at least in the first year, you had the real thing. And we could not even imagine what descended on us in the beginning of 2020. Um, and these last months have been a big challenge to all of us. And I uh, tend to say, and uh, this week we have various graduation ceremonies. Uh, and uh, one thing I always repeat is it's, it's not Zoom or gloom. We learned, and you learned, actually, that, that Zoom and Gloom is possible. So you can, can both do things virtually, and you can do them uh, in real. Uh, and what's, in this sort of sense, you are pioneers, because you had to live through these sort of changes at the end of your own two years. Uh, and I think pioneers uh, is something which deserve also a special appreciation. We want to thank you for your cooperation in assessing the situation, sharing your concerns, and cooperating with the administration on making the best of the situation imposed uh, on all of us. It was an unimportant lesson how to cope with unexpected situations and how to adapt to new circumstances. What I'm saying here is even until today true. We had yesterday two graduation ceremonies. One for the diploma program, which took place in this room. And it was like now, no masks. We were even allowed to sing. 
we could invite quite a lot of people uh, and still we felt safe. And in the afternoon of the same day yesterday, we had the graduation of MICE 24 in the University of Vienna. And there, it was already difficult to get in. We had to wear masks from the beginning to the end. No singing was allowed. The vice rector was, was in his speech mainly talking about what's not possible uh, and uh, why it's not possible. Uh, and I thought, and I still feel this, the DA is a different place. It's a smaller family where we can try at least to make the best of things, much easier than in one of these big bureaucratic organizations like the University of Vienna. I love the University of Vienna, don't get me wrong. Uh, but still I'm proud of the Diplomatic Academy. Uh, and actually they will continue with this sort of mask wearing for, uh, as I understand, for another few months there. You learned in these two years what it means to live and work with people of different backgrounds. And we even had the chance now for a year to see whether that's a positive element for your career, for your personal development. Uh, and that's actually, I think, something that we can do. We can celebrate together and try at least uh, to use it in the best of ways. I always say these two years that I had here as a student were the most decisive years for my professional career. Uh, and you did not only study here, but you also could celebrate. Not as much as we all had hoped. Uh, as we know, the bar had to be closed, also on the 13th of March, 2020, I guess. But with the help of the DASI, of the Diplomatic Academy Student Initiative, and the societies and communities, you organized uh, a lot of things. Some of you sang in the DA choir, you were active in the sports society, you played football, you even went on a ski trip, or more than one ski trip, as, as I understand. You learned how to taste wine, you went to the Solomon Winery, I guess somewhere in the, in the Danube Valley. And not to forget, uh, I should not know too much about that, uh, the Tipsy Thursdays. Immediately, immediately positive reaction if I talk to Tipsy first. I have no idea why. Uh, you attended the ball of, this, of the sciences. We went together, I remember, to the Turkish embassy uh, for, in, on the invitation of the then Turkish ambassador. The Turks are changing ambassadors in Vienna quite rapidly because, as you know, our relations are sometimes pumpy. Um, but we were invited there for some sort of propaganda, but the dinner was, the, the lunch was, <laughs> but the lunch was fine, I, as far as I remember. It was the day of the operation, what was it called? Open Shield, the operation uh, of the Turks invading the northern part of Syria. So we experienced quite a, a lot of things uh, together. Uh, and you, or, you organized also an, an, an and Orange, the world campaign at the Diplomatic Academy, you had a Christmas extravaganza, something which uh, the following mice did not enjoy, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, you had the DA charity ball in your, in your first year. You went to Brussels, you wrote for your magazine polemics, you organized conferences, Tazi conferences, climate coaction. I remember that... Uh, uh, President van der Bellen opened uh, this, uh, this conference here uh, and he was actually somehow criticizing me before because I said, this is a conference about climate change. Uh, he looked at me and said, that's climate crisis. That's climate crisis we are in. You really accomplished organizing outstanding events uh, and some of you spent uh, a trimester abroad in one of our exchange programs, Stanford University at the MGIMO in Moscow, one of you, two in Seoul at the Korea University, two in Beijing at the Chinese Foreign Affairs University, and two in Jerusalem uh, at the Hebrew University. And you also started important initiatives that were maintained for, for, for the coming students, uh, like the ombudspersons and the consent workshop.
we continued these sort of activities. I'm not sure what I can say to you about the problems on the job market today. Normally, when I talk to the leavers after the, 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 the academic two years stop here, I wish them the best. But you are one year after, so you are hopefully, you, there is no necessity to wish the best for you. I guess uh, a lot of you are on a good way. Uh, and I know that you have that you have profited and benefited from our career services, seminars, workshop, contacts. Uh, and I heard from a number of you that you have obtained good jobs already. Uh, and two of you, by the way, switched sides and became full-time members of the DA staff. That's a good idea. Um, I hope you had an interesting, rewarding, and productive time here at the Diplomatic Academy. We are proud of you, this group of 67 altogether students, and well, actually graduates from 25 countries, uh, more than half coming from abroad, more than 50% female. This place has a long history, as I said, of almost 270 years. You are now officially part of it as alumni. You are part of this truly international family, which is your alma mater. I hope that you stay active in the club DA, and I'm impressed that almost all of you are members of the club DA of our alumni organization with uh, now local chapters in more than 120 countries. You named your class after Volker Bernadotte, in acknowledgement of the work of the Volke Bernadotte Academy, the Swedish Agency for Peace, Security, and Development. And I'm sure this was not by chance. I'm sure that you want to follow the line and footsteps of such an organization. So, although it's one year after, my message is simple. Go into the world as a responsible and active citizen there is a disruption everywhere. It's not the pandemic I'm talking about. It's the global situation I'm talking about. Uh, and what we need now, and we use this in the academy actually as a motto, is diplomacy. We have the hashtag diplomacy matters. And that's not just the hashtag. That's something that we really want you and all of us to live. You are the only, the one and only class of 2020, even if it's already 2021. You worked hard for this moment and you were waiting for it a long time. So enjoy the ceremony here. I wish you the best for your future. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues at the DA, members of the faculty, and dear graduates. As Vice Rector for Educational Affairs at the University of Vienna, it is my great pleasure to offer all of you my sincere congratulations on behalf of the University of Vienna. And thank you very much to the Diplomatic Academy for the constructive cooperation between our institutions for a very long time. It is a shame that I cannot be with you in person today, but recent times have made us flexible in many different ways to communicate. You have received a very demanding education and gained wide range knowledge in politics, international relations, economics, contemporary history and law. You have also worked in different foreign languages. On top of a demanding study program, you have had to cope with a global pandemic that had a huge impact of all of us, personally as well as professionally. 
I suppose we have all been in situations where we have been pushed to our limits and in the end realized that we are capable of much more than we expected. Particularly, this experience will be very important for your life in future. Because challenges like climate change and sustainability, for example, need our awareness, and especially your awareness, the awareness of the young people, to create solutions and find new, way, new ways to solve these problems. But today, this is a day for celebration, to recognize all of your achievements in these last two years. So I'm very happy that you all can come together in person today and celebrate with your professors, friends and families. Let me wish you every possible success for your future. I hope that you will always remember this time with joy as a very important and instructive phase of your life. Good luck and congratulations on behalf of the University of Vienna. Um, probably one of the few um, upsides to have a graduation ceremony one year later is actually that it plays in well into human psychology, all right? Our brain, um, according to research, um, works in a way that we tend to forget quite quickly the bad things and we retain um, much better the good things. All right, what does that tell us? So you have pretty much already forgotten about everything that was <laughs> zoom and gloom. And the only thing that you really remember are all the good uh, and wonderful things that make life uh, at the DA so meaningful um, and so interesting. So in normal times, uh, so the times that you basically remember, you attended your classes, you networked, you participated in all kinds of uh, social events, you initiated your own conferences, um, and at the end, uh, you were supposed to go to study trips, all right, and uh, to have your graduation. And I remember so well when we were sitting in one of my seminars and talking actually about a study trip that then unfortunately did not um, materialize. Um, and at a time really prior to COVID, um, who would have thought that one day sitting in front of your laptops all day in funny clothes or even your pajamas would turn you into a Model DA student <laughs> and a respected um, citizen. Um, but as social scientists, of course, we also know that um, every challenge and every crisis also entails great opportunity, um, opportunity to learn and also um, opportunity to grow. And for some lessons, I would like to um, consult uh, two eminent thinkers to come up with two quotes, because in yesterday's speech, Ambassador Briggs actually mentioned that every good speech uh, includes a quote. So just to be on the safe side, I included two, uh, <laughs> two quotes. Uh, and I don't want to point out even that uh, Ambassador Briggs' speech today that I don't think included a, a single one. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's just a, a small side note. Um, so a lesson one and quote one, um, Benjamin Franklin. Only two things are certain in this world, um, a bit gloomy, death and taxes. Uh, in our pre-COVID um, lives, we got accustomed to um, great many things. Um, but as we know from Professor Rowe's history classes, um, there's no entitlement to um, a stable international order, um, neither is there an entitlement um, to peace, uh, to clean air, to um, free speech, academic freedom, human rights. We don't have to go so far anymore in Europe uh, to know this. Um, and the problem when we take things for granted, I think, um, really is that um, it gives us this feeling and also a bit discomfort that we think we just can do things the usual way. But I think that you are already part of a generation of graduates um, that cannot just 
play the usual games and they can't just fall trodden, um, by trodden paths and follow your self-interest. I think uh, you're facing many challenges or we are facing many challenges um, that require common solutions um, and innovative thinking. Um, and I think that as graduates of the DA, you are um, so talented and you're full of um, ambition and initiative. And I, I always experienced this when I wanted to organize some things. I remember one time I announced it and I had already 10 emails that you know student wanted to participate, all right? So I think that um, you're also trained according to very high academic standards. So you're well placed to make this difference um, and to provide the solutions. Um, lesson two, quote two. Um, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main, John Donne. Um, I think uh, if Corona has taught us one thing um, here at the DA, um, it was um, how important it is for us to be connected um, as an institution, as director and vice director, um, faculty, staff, administration, students, um, alumni. Um, and no institution has been designed for corona and uh, to deal with it. And certainly not everything uh, went perfect, especially um, in your last um, trimester here at the DA. But I think overall, uh, that's my impression and my takeaway, um, all these challenges did not erode um, the spirit of community here at the DA, I felt um, it rather strengthened it. And I also felt that over the past one uh, and a half years, we have made big improvements. Um, and we really now apply technology um, to our um, advantage. Um, and uh, I think it's also time to, to thank, um, I'm personally very grateful to the great students, to the colleagues here at the DA for the consideration for the hard work dedication and support uh, during this time, and I think especially for the humor. I think humor is something very important when facing these kind of situations. Um, and I think that so many of you have um, come here back today, and I'm very happy to see all your faces. I think that also tells us about, it's kind of a, a testimony, and it really confirms, I think, the spirit of community um, we have here at the DA. And now that Finally, and I think it's high time, uh, the moment has come to celebrate. I think there's also no need for me anymore for any kind of quotations or wisdom of, of thinkers from the past. I feel that you as the students are very well placed to know about celebration. I have my office very close to the tipsy weasel. <laughs> and uh, I know that you practice um, very thoroughly um, for this occasion there and in many places that we as a faculty probably don't want even to know about. So um, in this uh, spirit, I wish you a very nice um, evening. Um, you achieved your degree in extraordinary times and I think you should be extra proud of yourself uh, at this moment. So thank you very much.
We will now call the graduates of the 23rd MICE. Nicola Manfredi Odibert, France, Italy. Gushlan Bashirova, Russian Federation. <laughs> Veronika Bramböck, Austria. Anna Lia Brunetti, Italy. <laughs> Emily Passwein, Austria, United Kingdom. <laughs> Gaetan Wolfgang Castillon, France, Germany. <laughs> Sebastian Egger, Austria. Katrina Fallast, Austria. <laughs> Stefan Emanuel Fink, Austria. Giovanni Grisendi, Brazil, Italy. <laughs> Wolfram Vitus Grossa, Austria. <laughs> Maximilian Gruber, Austria. Denise Iskendarova, Russian Federation. <laughs> Dora Janoji, Hungary. <laughs> Alexander Gerhard Glass, Austria, Australia. Lena Dodakian Krikorian, USA Armenia. <laughs> Stella Marie Land, Austria. Olga Leudold Chen, Austria. <laughs> Lynette Lokuruka, Kenya. Joseph Nicolaus Lusser, Austria, USA. <laughs> 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 
Michaela Mazzukic, Germany, Croatia. Diana Mautner Markov, Austria. <laughs> Yasmin Meslub, Austria. Onion Miketic, Canada. <laughs> Marissa K. Miller, USA. Albert Mück, Austria. <laughs> Matteo Augustinus Naplacen, Austria. Angela Dora Novi Chavaria, Italy. <laughs> Shane Patrick O'Callaghan, USA. Gustav Faustkanga Pedersen, Norway. <laughs> Veronica Claire Pfeiffer, Austria. Nicolò Razza, Italy. Marco Redolfi, Austria. Lisa Reitbrecht, Austria. <laughs> Maximilian Sandner, Austria. <laughs> Martina Sebastian, Austria. Victoria Spüttel, Austria. <laughs> Simba Tanaguzova, Kazakhstan. Raffaella Antonia Tiefenbacher, Austria. <laughs> Roxana Claudia Tompea, Romania.
Victor van de Pol, the Netherlands. <laughs> Barnabas Beck, Hungary. Marisa Vicky, Switzerland. <laughs> Stefan Wolf, Austria. Dear Director Ambassador Bix, dear Deputy Director Gesandte Kepler Schlesinger, Excellencies, if there are any here, <laughs> at this place you never know, <laughs> distinguished faculty and staff of the Diplomatic Academy, dear ladies and gentlemen, guests, friends, family, especially you watching over the live stream today, dear colleagues, liebe Freunde. It is a great honor for me to stand here in front of you to celebrate this occasion of our graduation. And I think uh, more than ever, the old saying holds its truth, better late than never. <laughs> it is a great honor for me because in my life, and I think here I really uh, can speak for all of us, at least this is the impression I had, um, the two years here at the Diplomatic Academy have brought in a great amount of joy and happiness to our, to our lives. And this comes from, this is the type of joy you get from a place which has on the one hand intellectual stimulus to offer, but also um, space uh, for, for one's own expression and a certain laissez-faire attitude. And uh, we, we mentioned earlier um, Professor Neudek, unfortunately he isn't here with us, maybe he's watching <laughs> the live stream. <laughs> But the, the, the laissez-faire attitude, I, I, I can assure you, I don't mean this in an economic sense. <laughs> of course, as was mentioned before, this, this joy we had, um, our time here was cut a bit short uh, in the spring of 2020. And uh, we missed out on a lot of occasions. I would like to, to, to take this moment to raise awareness for the fact as we as, as young people, as students, um, were expected to, to pay a very high price in this time. We missed a lot of experiences, study trips, um, personal relations, uh, which will perhaps never come again. And uh, the situation on the job market, I think, uh, is also, there is a certain pressure which we can feel. Uh, I've been told by colleagues who, who did uh, find work that they, they haven't been able to, to meet their colleagues in their new jobs because due to um, 
uh, distance working um, restrictions, but we hope that this will change uh, in the coming days. And of course, when I look into this audience, um, there are many faces which I do not see today. Um, a lot of our friends and colleagues are, uh, have gone back to their home countries or to other countries, and uh, especially to you if you're watching um, on the live stream, I would like to say in the, in the name of the entire year that uh, although you are not here physically, you are with us here in our memories and in our hearts, and uh, we are very much looking forward to the day when our paths will cross again, and I am, I am quite sure and confident that this will be the case on one day. Already um, at, during our time at the DA and, and also in the, in the speeches of, 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 my, of the speakers who came before me, um, it was mentioned that we live in interesting times, in, in turbul turbulent times, and of course uh, the past one and a half years have um, accelerated um, upheaval and, um, and transformation. So what to do looking towards the future? As we come here together for one last time, at this place of, of what I like to call a place of joy, I, I hope and I wish that, that we all, as we uh, are set to, to, to go out into the world, uh, we all take a bit of this joy and, and, and happiness and, and spread it wherever we may be. Um, perhaps as, as diplomats of kindness, curiosity, and understanding. In the name of the entire year, I would like to give, I would like to say thanks to everybody here at the Diplomatic Academy, to the staff and faculty, um, and personally, I would also like to um, give thanks to, to all of you, all the people that have really um, um, touched my heart. And um, unfortunately, I do not have a, a quote for you today, but, <laughs> but I think I have something um, maybe even better um, it, it, it was uh, bound to come, of course, at a, at a certain time uh, here at the Diplomatic Academy. I'd just like to say in, in times of trouble, you know, when, when uh, these daunting challenges which uh, surely, surely do stand um, before us, perhaps it is a good idea to look at the life of Maria Theresia, who, who uh, founded this Diplomatic Academy in 1754. And, um, and she, of course, was confronted with challenges from the very first uh, day of her reign. It was a big war, as, as you, may, you may have heard. And, uh, <laughs> and nevertheless, uh, she, she uh, rose to these challenges and uh, was never defeated and had the time to, to found um, this academy for which we have, are, of course, very um, thankful. And I just want to end the speech by wishing you a wonderful evening tonight with your friends and with your family, and all the best for the future. Thank you very much. this feeling, Joe, that you're going to leave me with a very difficult task after such a compelling speech, but I will take advantage of the kind of ethos you promoted, and I'll, I'll continue this kind of narrative a bit further. Now, Ambassador Briggs, you mentioned a few key words today in your opening speech, and I would also like to share one of my own, and that one is extraordinary. Now, extraordinary is defined as a moment far beyond what is usually magnitude or degree. No doubt, the past three years have been extraordinary, unprecedented even. Extraordinary kind, considering the narrow chance of us to meet each other in this very formula at this stage of our lives, but also extraordinarily difficult, considering the last year's hardships. But here my intention is to unite these two words with us all. We, as individuals, have been both unprecedented and extraordinary. From, just to recall some of the non-academic moments or past the academic credentials, from the open mic performances 
to further pushing the agenda on gender equality and then on climate change with the amazing DASICON team, which was actually holding the last public event of 2020, um, all the way to pioneering long week quarantines before they became mainstream. Regardless of the occasion, from the very beginning, we took the lead on matters with passion and flair. From the trips that never materialized and now will still have to be scheduled individually and a much higher relative cost, especially considering the MFA visits in North Macedonia, to the balls, receptions, and the amazing DA band. We have curated the social aspect of our master's degree in a style that is true to our complex collective character. Now, I'm not sure how many other MICE programs have been spanning across three years instead of two like ours did, but if they have, surely they weren't unprecedented. For some of us, the DA was also a second home. Living here in such unprecedented times made us cherish the small yet important things in life, such as using the full extent of three kitchens, taking ownership of the fest sal to do some very late night piano lessons, gathering in the bar, submitting papers close to deadlines from the airport, or even, <laughs> um, or even running out for a master key because we have an exam to catch up. And nevertheless, there was a lot of bonding, a lot of bonding with kindred spirits. There will always be the memories, and there will always be the past. You can call it a clan, a network, a mafia, or a family. Whatever you call it, wherever you go, make sure you have one. Make sure you have true friends. Friends who will push you to be stubborn about your vision, but flexible enough about the means to achieve it. Friends who know what it feels like not to be represented in a certain field, and who will tell you, will tell you that at times you will have to be that person that you once needed, and of course, so many others do in the present. Now, if history teaches us that the past can be seen as a foreign country, um, then in the structural sense of the past, politics can be a powerful tool dictating its motion. And I think this place should use its power to build communities, to serve them, and to foster mo values that will model the next generations. To keep society moving forward, what we need today is a generational change, not only to create better jobs or a more sustainable line of comfort, but to create a renewed sense of purpose. And the time is always right to do what is right even when it comes to reframing narratives. Now, great societies before us have tended to look backwards and look, try to find inspiration in golden agents. Here, our eyes have always been forward. Ceteris Parbus, you are leaving the festival today, ready for leadership. Your academic records say so. The history of the DA says so. The character that you have demonstrated in the past three years clearly says so. You are taking with you the tools to weigh the alternatives, to balance priorities, and to assess risks. All you need is the courage to act on the conclusions you will reach. In the workplace you start or join, the causes that you feel called to enlist, and soon the families that you will form. Whatever it is, the very essence of your upcoming leadership will lie in making a lot of difficult decisions, a lot of difficult choices. So when failure comes, just trust that it's part of the process. For this, you have to be willing to fail from time to time in order to succeed. And we all failed so many times in so many places. So thanks God that there's some value to that. So I hope that the experiences at the DA will leave you with an attitude, not of fear, but of confidence. Confidence that we can, uh, we can tackle hard problems, overcome obstacles, and be the masters of our fate. Now, certainty is an illusion. Perfect safety, a mirage. <laughs> zero is always unattainable, except when the case is an absolute zero and then motion in life itself cease to exist. So basically, in a nutshell, what I would like to uh, tell you today and what I would like to wish to you today is to be confident that there are paths out there that have not been walked on. Those are your paths. And that you have something important to contribute to this world and that the world will be a lesser place without your contribution. So be committed agents of change and models for those less privileged. Now more than ever, 
our world needs the light of practical models who are voracious and kind. Once you can align what makes you happy with what helps the world around you, you have found a way to live an exuberant life because of life of service, be it public service, is the ultimate key to joy and fulfillment. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Ambassador Briggs. Thank you very much, Professor Kompros, the members of faculty and staff, Jenny and Henry, colleagues and friends. Thank you very much and enjoy today. Please give a big hand to the string quartet of the Orchestra of the University of Vienna. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, thought, I, I thought during this ceremony that we will miss you. But actually, after the two speeches of your student representatives, I thought, no, you carried the torch on. You have the spirit with you. Keep that and stay with us and stay with this planet. We have only this one. You can change it. Thank you very much. The informal part is starting right now.